In this short video, I'll be guiding you through the process of how to either register your new e-filing profile, how you can overcome some of the difficulties you might be experiencing in logging in. Your profile might be blank. I will show you how you can actually register your tax profiles and actually have access either to your business taxes or your personal taxes. And welcome to the CFO Hire channel where I go through business processes, accounting software and general compliance for you, the business owner. Now, if you haven't yet subscribed, you're welcome to subscribe so you get first hand when new videos are uploaded. Cool. Let's dive in. Log into your browser, go into your Google account or your best search engine that you use and then we'll look for the e-filing. Search for e-filing or SARS e-filing, whatever you find easier, this should pop up and you'll click on the SARS e-filing. To make it easier, if you do get these options, you can click on the register. Because you don't have a login details, you can't click on login, you will click on register. Now when registering, as I said in the beginning, if you did somehow register before, it might say that you've registered before and you need to log in. Now in this case, let's test this and see if this taxpayer we're putting on and registering them on e-filing, if they've already registered. If they haven't registered, we'll get an error code. So let's see how far we get. I'll put in the name, surname. Yes, they are South African. We'll provide SARS with the ID number and the date of birth. We'll click on next. Warning, you already exist as an e-filing user please make use of login. So this does happen, not, I wouldn't say all the time, but it ha happens often because you haven't logged in yourself. Maybe someone else has logged on your behalf or you went to the SARS branch and you registered an account, but you've never logged into that account. So in this case, this taxpayer has registered, but hasn't logged in. So you can't go into register. And if you know your username and password, well, then you just log in. Then it'd be so simple, you wouldn't actually be watching this video. So in your case, you either lost your password or you've lost your username. So in this taxpayer, I've asked the taxpayer, do you have a username? They said, no, they don't. I asked them, do they have your password? They said, no, they don't. So to start off with, we'll say, forgot username. It'll ask for your cell phone number and ID. Okay, in the next screen, you'll put in your details, your cell phone number, your email, and your ID. Now, when putting in your cell phone number and email address, some of us have more than one cell phone number and most of us have more than one email address. You know, you've got a second email address where you send all your spam. I would suggest using an email address that you most likely would have given to SARS, um, your main one, because they will verify this on their side. If you're going to put the wrong email address in, this process might not work. So your tax number. Now your tax number you'll find, as I said in the beginning, either on your RP5 form that you have or on your payslip. I'll click on next. And it'll ask me, how would you like to receive your one-time PIN? Now I can understand that it's easier to get it for your cell phone, but I would prefer um, on my side to go on email. I just prefer email. It will say you prefer email contact. That you need to know you've got the preferred email contact. It will show by hashtags and I'll click send one time pin. Now the one time pin will be six digits and you'll see you've got a three minute timeline to get that pin. So then you'll go into your email and pop up the first time. It might be in your spam email. So one time pin. Notice the pin is sometimes a bit longer. You can just choose the last six digits of the of the number that'll work. So in this case, it's a 707163. And I'll say submit. There's my username. Now this username is very important because in the future, when you click onto your profile, you'd have to click on your username, not your email address. So let me write that down. Remember the problem, we didn't have our password. Remember, we don't have our password. So now I can add my own pro password. Can you see the problem we had? We're fixing, we're getting our username and we're getting our password because we're gonna add a new password. So let me add a new password here. And just remember, to, just to be sure, your password should have a capital letter. 
and it should have a number and it should have some type of special character. Okay, you'd have received a notification stating that your password has been successful and you'll get back to the login page. Once you're back on the login page, you can now use the username that you received and then you can add the password. Welcome to the CFIO channel. Don't forget to subscribe. I've got different types of videos talking about compliance. We speak about QuickBooks. I've got a video from start to finish. We've also got how to pitch your business. I'm sure you're here for the tax clearance certificate. So after registering yourself with SARS on the e-filing, I've got the tax clearance certificate video on how you can get your tax pin and that's got over 22,000 views. And then you get into your actual e-filing profile. Now the first time you log into your e-filing profile, you might not see your tax or your personal tax or your company tax profile on you. You'll have to add this. So the second step is to actually add your profile to your e-filing login. This only allows you, what you've done so far, only allows you to actually use the e-filing profile. The second part of the process, which people get confused with often, is having the actual access to their personal tax or their business tax. Now let's start with adding a new profile or your own profile to your SARS login. To do this, I will go on the top. Can you see the top options on top? You will click on organizations and under organizations, you will go then to the options on your left of your screen. And then you will put inside organizations again. So you'll click on organizations again, and then you'll add saying register new. This is you adding yourself. Okay. Cause if, well, if you got the yourself listed on this option, then you don't have to do this process, but in most cases you won't be there. Your profile won't be there. So you'll have to add this yourself manually. So I'm going to click on register new. And when you click on register new, it will ask you all the personal details of your specific company. If you're adding a company or you as an individual, your personal details. In this case, I'm doing an individual. So I'll put in individual. And can you see the options you have now changed to individual name and not company name? So I'll add these details quickly inside. Initials. I must this when you are completing this details, I would advise that you have your IRP5 with you and use the information on, on your IRP5. It will just go quicker because some of us got more than one bank account. Some of us have got more than one house that we stay at. Um, we also have more than one email address or cell phone number. Um, in this case, I'd prefer, and it would be preferred that you, that you add the ones and the details that SARS ha really has. The process goes much quicker um, because then they won't have to verify or do external verification and ask for extra documents, which is not reflected on their side. How do you define it about SARS? Are you a tax practitioner? Well, if you're a tax practitioner, I doubt it. Your telephone number. APSA branch name will be central. Branch number. And it's a savings account. Contact person is in. Well, designation is going to be um, admin, telephone number, and then you go to transfer your cell phone number. You give some form of description, so you can say this is your self. It's a nice personal text. 
and then you'll click on continue okay once you are successfully registered in terms of the form and you click continue this screen will pop up and all it's asking you to do is which folder would you like to place this taxpayer under in your case you might only have one called system default i have two because i split my clients between vat returns and i split them according to if they do dividends tax and different forms of taxes in your case you are only going to have yourself and maybe your company so you will choose the system default once you choose on system default you'll click continue now it's very important that you come to the screen if for some reason you do not come to the screen it means that your form that you filled in was incorrect either you missed out the postal address or your year end um, because your year end is very important to get that one correct if you're an individual you will choose february as your year end i will click continue and now it says my individual name it will show your passport or your id number and the group is selected you can print the summary of this if you want to in this case i'm just going to continue when I click on continue, this is the third part of your tax registration. At this point, you will have access to your e-filing by putting in your username and password. You will then have your business or your individual personal tax profile so you can view it there however you might get this error which says you do not have any tax types if this is the case let's add your tax types you will go to organizations and then add tax types on the left so in this case you will then add all the tax numbers that you have so if you're a company you will might be pay as you earn you will have then your mp 501s you'll have your vat return if you're vat registered you'll have a vet pen, vat, vat penalty if you are paying late you'll have a provisional tax so these numbers is something that you have to have with you if in an individual you'll just need to have your personal tax number and your personal tax number will be placed here by the individual income tax itr12 so that is where you will put your tax number as i said in the beginning your tax number will be found either on your payslip or on your irp5 if you have one so in this case i'll put in the tax number just to make it clear this screen has to be ticked all the taxes that you have will be ticked a word of caution and what not to be confused with you can't tick that 201 and register for tax in this case so you can't register for tax on this screen because you have to have a number and by having a number it means you have been registered already all this screen is allowing you to do is allowing you access to submit your returns and view your returns online that's all this screen is doing so once you finish with this process we will then and you put in your tax difference number you can choose your tax office i'll choose cape town in this case and then you'll click on register so i'll click on the register icon and once it's registered it says on the top in green tax types successfully updated and it will also say the status and the status will say awaiting registration verification awaiting status verification now this verification can take anything between a day or two weeks i'm not sure what the turnaround time is exactly for um SARS, but you can come back to it in an hour it could it could be registered i'm doing this after hours so i'm guessing that by tomorrow it should be registered once this is successful then only you'll have access to your e-filing.
So two days later, I logged into the e-filing profile and as you can see, I am registered. Let's see if the taxpayer is registered. Once again, I log in, I click on view taxpayer. Once I view the taxpayer, I'll go to organizations. I can go to organizations again. And I can check all my organizational tax types. And when I go down, it says status successfully activated. If you're an individual, you'd like to have the ITR 12. And if you're a business owner, you'd like to have the IRP 6. Hope you enjoy that video. Now comes the next part, which is actually categorizing all your expenses and then having the ability to submit your tax return. And this is when you'll need a professional. And a professional accountant like myself will be using software like QuickBooks Online to assist you in keeping your records clean and up to date. Registration, as I said, is the easy part. As a business owner, good luck on your journey and I wish you all the best.